Vichikicha is often translated as skeptical doubt. But actually the real meaning of Vichikicha is not skeptical doubt. It leads to doubt, but it's really not about the doubt. So what does Vichikicha mean? So there are two interpretations. First, the root word vichi means seeking or inquiring, right? looking for answers. Kitch means to strain, to tire, to become perplexed or vexed. Right? Vexed simply means the mind gets tired. So basically the mind gets tired looking for an answer. That's what vichi kicha here means with this first translation. But there is also an alternative translation. Both of them actually leads to the same conclusion. The alternate translation there, there is that the word V means the opposite, devoid, right? Chikicha here means remedy based on knowledge, knowing the answer. And that gives you the solution. So chikicha, realizing the answer, you now have the solution. But here, V chikicha means you don't have it. You fail to get it. So in both cases, it simply means you are not able to understand or uh, being able to recognize the reality. You don't have the answer. And therefore, the mind gets tired. And then you begin to doubt because you don't have the answer. You become lost and you, be, you, and you go into a state of uh, delusion. Right? So doubt refers to the absence of deeper spiritual confidence in the triple gem. Right? So this deeper spiritual uh, this deeper spiritual confidence arises from knowledge. Right? Uh, so basically it's not talking about people doubting it, but people who are not having a clear knowledge. And it destabilizes us. But I'm going to explain more later on with the scientific explanation. Vichikicha. The scientific explanation is that it is cognitive dissonance. So what is cognitive dissonance? It means that a part of our mind, the thinking part of our mind and the emotional part of our mind are pulling in opposite directions. Thinking part of the mind is the conscious rational thinking of knowing right from wrong. Emotional part of the mind is the part of the mind that is feeling, wanting what is nice, what is pleasant and not caring whether it is right or wrong. Take for example, we recite the uh, we recite the five precepts. The first one is not to harm living things, not to kill. So one night, maybe your aircon breaks down, your fan is not strong enough. As you try to fall asleep, you get the mosquito coming and you try to chase it away. And it comes again and you try to chase it away. And it keeps coming, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. By the tenth time, what do you think you're gonna do? You're gonna give, do a little clap, isn't it? Now, Doing that, you have violated the first the very first precept, the very first of the five precepts. So what's going on? Does it mean that you doubt the precept? No. Your thinking mind reminds you that you have taken the five precepts, that you must not harm living things. And on the other hand, your emotional mind is so angry with this mosquito that keeps disturbing you. Finally, you, in your emotional mind, you felt you have no choice but to get rid of it. Right? That is Vichikicha. So in other words, Vichikicha is not like you are doubting the Dharma. Vichikicha is you know there is the Dharma, but at the same time, your emotions lead you to behave in the opposite way. That's Vichikicha. So that's really cognitive dissonance. But that can also, people can perceive it to say, oh, uh, you're not following the five precepts. Are you doubting the five precepts? You know? But actually, it's not about doubt. It is this emotional mind tearing uh, in the opposite direction as the thinking mind. You see, we are very intelligent people. Human beings are very intelligent beings. But unfortunately, we use our intelligence in the wrong way. So the real explanation of Vichikicha is simply that when feeling and reasoning are pulling in opposite directions, right? invariably leading to this mental state called cognitive dissonance, which kicha, what happens? We automatically, or, or uh, by our own conditioning, we react according to feeling. That means we, you know, we slap at the, the mosquito. And then 
We try to justify uh, our emotionally charged decision or action by using clever reasoning. I'm getting rid of all these Aedes mosquito, so we reduce dengue fever in the area. You know, so this is intelligent <laughs> justification of your emotionally charged action. That's really what Wichikicha is. And this can be explained scientifically because our brain, there is an emotional part of the brain deep inside, controlled by a, a little structure called amygdala. Right? There is the amygdala inside, which is our emotional control center. And then our thinking brain, which is in the front here, the thinking part, where right in the mid, uh, lower part of the front is this prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for our thinking. These two parts of the brain are constantly fighting each other, sending messages to, against each other. But most of the time, when you have an emotional decision and a uh, rational decision, uh, which are pulling in the opposite direction, which do you decide on most of the time? Most of the time, emotions. Now I can show you the scientific explanation why when we are faced with emotional decision and rational decision, we choose to think in an emotional way. So let's listen to this. Five, four, three, two, one, turn! And when we try to control them, we start a tug of war between our brain's oldest and newest parts. While ancient structures like the amygdala respond to threats by trying to turn our anger or fear on, it's newer structures, such as the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of our brain, that tried to turn them off. It's the tug of war between these two systems that gives rise to our emotions. At New York University, neuroscientist Joseph Ledoux has studied how the amygdala and the cortex shape our emotional responses. You know more about the amygdala than anybody alive, and you still can't control yours. No. Why? Now, the, it's an interesting thing, again, that has to do with the wiring of the brain. This is if we could just look at it here. So, this is the human brain inside a skull. And the prefrontal cortex is here in the front, right behind your forehead. And that is the, the newest part of the, the brain. This is where we make our decisions, this is where we plan for the future um, and strategize. The lateral prefrontal cortex has no connectivity with the amygdala. The amygdala has super highways to talk to the cortex, but the prefrontal cortex has only back roads and side streets to get to the amygdala. And therefore, it is unable to tell the amygdala, cool it. But why are there no connections? We're in the process of evolving as we speak, and those connections have not been put in yet. This thing was built to do fancy things cognitively, not necessarily to control our emotions. So you can see it's all because of the way our brain has evolved. Our emotional brain, the emotional part of the brain controlled by the amygdala has very strong connections going to our thinking brain, which is the prefrontal cortex. While at the same time, the thinking brain has very weak connections going back to the amygdala. So when the amygdala is aroused, when you're emotionally aroused, the emotional part of the brain is sending a lot of messages to the thinking brain, disturbing the thinking brain, disrupting your, your, your conscious rational thinking. While at the same time, your thinking brain has very weak connections to go back to the amygdala to try to calm down the amygdala. And that's why you're not able to tame your emotions. So when we are faced with a situation where our thinking mind is thinking of one thing and our emotional mind is thinking of something in the opposite direction, when the two are pulling in opposite directions, we normally automatically choose to think emotionally or react emotionally because the emotional brain is stronger than the thinking brain sending all these disturbing messages to disturb your thinking brain so you can no longer think rationally so now you understand now give you an excuse huh? next time you react emotionally and somebody starts to say why are you so emotional don't blame me it's my amygdala <laughs> Yeah, it's your emotional brain that is doing all the disturbances.